गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन एम आई ऑडिबल सो इट वुड बी बेटर इफ सम ऑफ यू कैन टर्न ऑन योर वीडियोज सो दैट इट वुड बी वेरी लाइवली फॉर मी टू इंटरक्ट सो लेट मी गिव एन इंट्रोडक्शन अबाउट माई सेल्फ माई नेम इज अपूर्वा मंदा आई हैव सिक्योर्ड ऑल इंडिया रैंक ऑफ सिक्स फोर्टी सिक्स इन यू पी एस सी सी एस सी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू आई हैव नियरली एट ईयर्स ऑफ यू पी एस सी एक्सपीरियंस i have given three interviews and four okay. mains and i have also given a forest service nah, mains nah. also so with three interview experience so i will share some insights about the personality test so first of all uh, let me congratulate all of you so who have cleared mains so congratulations and best wishes so there is only one last step and if you prepare it well then definitely you will be in the final list so where in the final list where you land in the final list the interview or the personality test score decides so this is the very very important step according to me it is not prelims it is not mains uh, personality test decides your fate so please be uh, very prepared for interview and uh, interview personality test requires the most uh, amount of preparation according to me Uh, so generally mains is important but personality test preparation in detail because 70 to 80% of the questions you can predict it is mostly on your daf and your personality so if you prepare properly then 80% of the questions you can prepare and you can score really well around 180 190 that would be a very good score so that would be the rock bottom if you prepare very well so now going on to the preparation of personality test so i would like to identify few components uh, let me share my screen so first thing uh, you have to go to the ups notification yeah, in the in the ups notification personality test guidelines please go through that so how many of you are aware about this particular guidelines given by upsc upsc notification so just go through what is written there in the personality test so they have given few keywords i will uh, try to highlight few keywords first thing is this is not a cross examination but a purposive conversation right so this is a purposive conversation so understand it it is not a question answer kind of interview it is a conversation like a formal conversation like how you have it with your superiors so that is a formal type of conversation so don't look for question and answer thing don't calculate that they have asked to 30 questions i have answered 28 questions then i must be getting around 180 190 so it is never like that it is not like a question and answer it is like a conversation that you have to build and the uh, second thing is they have identified the seven qualities which are essential so the upsc board members they will have before them your daf that you have already filled right apart from this they will look for seven qualities so these these seven qualities are very very important so first one is mental alertness right so in my first interview and in my second interview i was familiar with the seven qualities but i didn't understand what it means so what is mental alertness mental alertness is that whenever a interviewer is asking the question make sure that you cover all the aspects of the question in your answer just like means how they ask you two to three sub parts in the question you need to answer all the three sub parts right then only you will be awarded all the marks uh, allotted for that question similarly in interview you have to cover all the aspects of the question so generally um, when they ask uh, what is your opinion on particular current affairs for example israel palestine issue is going on so what is your view 
and highlight what are the steps that can be taken to improve the situation. Then you have to answer both the parts. So that is one aspect of mental alertness. Second aspect of mental alertness is you have to include the social, political, economic, ethical, or any other aspects the question demands. For example, if they are asking you to give a solution about Russia Ukraine war, then you have to include the solutions political, economic, ethical, social. So all the aspects must be included in that particular question uh, in your response. So that is what is mental alertness. So keenly listen to the question. So frame in your mind how many parts are there, how you have to answer. Take some four or five seconds of time, then process it and then give your response, right? If you want some other, uh, some extra time also, you can request the board that uh, give me a few seconds, I will think and answer. So you can uh, request in a polite manner. So that is what is mental alertness, right? Second thing is critical powers of assimilation. Critical powers of, so all these qualities uh, will be judged by the UPSC board. So they have already highlighted all these particular qualities. So second quality is critical powers of assimilation. So what do you mean by assimilation? So any information, when you are taking it, so you should have a 360 degree assessment of the situation. So uh, for example, they are asking on some controversial issue like a demonetization. So demonetization has both pros and cons. But finally, when you are giving your opinion on demonetization, you should give a 360 degree assessment of the situation, including all the stakeholders, all the different approaches must be inculcated. Right? So they may assess this critical power of assimilation by asking you some current issues of the day. So candidate should be able to put all the views. So then they will think that that person or that candidate is able to appreciate all sides of the story. So this is what is critical powers of assimilation. Uh, generally, what happens is, uh, okay, we will see in another quality. Third one, clear and logical exposition. So I need not explain, I think. This is self-explanatory. Clear and logical exposition. So whatever opinion or the argument that you are putting forward, that should have some logical thing. It should have coherence. All the arguments should have the coherence. So instead of giving someone's opinion, you should be able to form your own opinion in a logical way. For example, uh, on Israel-Palestine thing, if external affairs minister is saying something and if you are quoting the same thing, so that would not look uh better because uh that is the opinion given by the external affairs minister so you have to give your opinion similar to the government view but adds your own points that reflects your individuality and that logical coherence is important when you are doing the analysis right and next thing is balance of judgment So balance of judgment, balance is you have to uh, tell the pros and cons and take an opinion. So that view that you take must be a balanced view. For example, generally what happens in gender issues. So if a, a female candidate is asked about uh, gender issues, then they should not take the view, uh, maybe feminist view but they have to answer it in a balanced manner. For example, I will give you uh, an incident. My friend was asked about uh, woman entry in combat forces. So whether women must be allowed in the combat forces. So she was taking a, a feminist approach and she was arguing for entry in the combat forces. Then they have cross questioned her like what about the safety issues and what if uh, they are taken as prisoners of war and if other countries are blackmailing 
so what about all these issues but irrespective of all these issues she was arguing for women entry in the combat forces so when you are uh, dealing with such sensitive issues make sure that what are the different uh, approaches i mean different views but for that particular issue uh, there are some biological issues with respect to two women so you have to highlight that also so take some precautions and uh, also for neg- all the negative points try to give some solutions be practical pragmatic so practical and pragmatic is very important while giving the solution so that is what is balance of judgment right so even on issues of gender equality also avoid extremely patriarchal or extremely uh, radical or feminist approaches so take a middle ground so that is called as balance of judgment and uh, so next one is variety and depth of interest variety and depth of interest now this is very important how do you show the variety and depth of interest so this one the excellent way to show the depth of interest and variety is while filling your daf so already i think the last date for daf filling is over so it's fine if you have not entered the variety of interest but it is better to display varieties of interest in the daf and also when you are telling the answers also try to include as many dimensions as possible give some practical examples uh, and uh, try to make the conversation very lively so that shows your variety and depth of interest is you have to prepare each topic in detail that shows your depth of interest so at least the areas which you have mentioned in the daf you have to prepare in depth right uh, and next is next quality is social cohesion and leadership so again social cohesion you know uh, social factors etc you should be aware about the all those uh, social factors uh, caste system uh, tribe village every every social factor indeed and then leadership qualities you have to display so that is a self explanatory thing and then comes the last one intellectual and moral integrity intellectual and moral integrity so what does moral integrity and intellectual integrity mean so intellectual integrity means that if you know the answer tell that you know the answer if you don't know the answer tell admit that you do not know the answer but do not bluff the interview board because they can easily make out who is giving a right answer and who is cooking up the story so don't just cook up stories so even if you are stuck in between then just honestly admit that uh, you have done something wrong or honesty in the responses must be reflected so if you do not know an answer you tell them that uh, sir uh, this is to my limited understanding i know only this much i will read on it later maybe so like that you can say so do not bluff if you do not know the answer do not bluff this is very 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 important because generally what happens is we try to cook up or create something so generally in a mains answer if you do not know anything about the question we do not leave it we try to attempt it creating some key, some keyword we will try to cook up but do not cook up even when you are guessing just use the word that sir may i guess or may i try to answer it in my limited understanding so use such phrases so that they get an idea that you are not sure but you are guessing the answer right do not guess uh, but take a permission sometimes if you want to if you know that this might be the answer then uh, take the permission of the interview board saying that uh, i know this much so may i Uh, guess particular in in my understanding or ask for my knowledge right so these are the seven qualities that would be uh, looked in a candidate right so what you do is generally whenever you are preparing for personality test na so whenever you are preparing for a question or an answer try to look for all these qualities so on a day to day basis try to check whether you are addressing the mental alertness that is all aspects of the question you are understanding and you are reflecting in your answer check that 
critical powers of assimilation check whether you are giving a 360 degree approach check whether your answers are logical generally when you are saying that covid cases are rising then what is the logic show some reports show some statistics show some data so that is a logical exposition balance of judgment yes don't take a extremely radical views that you know already next uh, variety and depth of interest yes show them uh, talk in a political economic and different perspectives social cohesion yes sh show some social awareness and do not bluff so these are the qualities very important all right then next what to prepare so now the most important question comes is how to prepare and what to prepare so what to prepare is first of all the questions when you enter the interview board generally when you enter the hall the first question that would be asked is tell me about yourself so tell me about yourself is the primary area which you have to prepare within tell me about yourself also you prepare in very much detail your name what is the meaning of the name then your strengths your weakness how do you introduce yourself so if you want to display some particular features of your personality then tell that in your tell me about yourself for example i will give you all the examples because you can uh, understand it better so in my dap i have mentioned that i was doing sari culture activity with my father so i wanted the interview board to know that and i wanted the interview board to ask questions on that particular thing so i introduced myself saying that after my graduation so i started doing sari culture with my father then i was simultaneously preparing for upsc so that is how i used such thing so that the questions will be covered from that area so you can use tell me about yourself from that particular thing also i have a friend who has uh, kept rail fanning or uh, railway traveling through railways as one of the interest in the dab so whenever the question, interviewer was asking about tell me about yourself he was adding the hobby in the tell me about yourself so immediately the attention goes to that area and the next person or the next member would ask on the railways or traveling through railways something about it so you can use tell me about yourself in such a manner so that you can direct the interview board towards an area where you are comfortable right so that gives you an opportunity then you have to be very prepared about your strengths your weakness your role models your personalities the great personalities who have inspired you so you have to prepare about your mother father their profession your siblings their profession etc and tell me about yourself and then next comes the detail application form right okay so detailed application form uh, i will show you my dap so that you will get an idea how to prepare yes so can you see my dap so i will tell you how to prepare so on each word you have to prepare very detailedly for example my date of birth so it is second 593 so what happened in 93 they may ask what happened on second may 93 they may ask they may also ask about may 1st because that is a labor day uh, that is celebrated generally so in my various interviews in my mock interviews also i got so many questions on my date of birth also because 1993 is the year where 73rd and 74th constitutional amendments came into force so that year is significant for that particular thing so even the date of birth matters uh, year of birth matters month of birth matters 
so prepare in detail about the date of birth right next comes the address so in in my address it is excise colony which is mentioned so they have asked me about gst excise duty etc so because uh, randomly while seeing your dap they may get uh, they may remind about they may get reminded about these things gst excise colony so so each word in your dap matters then prepare in detail about your hometown region so i will tell you uh, in the next uh, coming discussion how to prepare about the region in detail then about the varangal telangana i will tell you how to prepare about your home district home state uh, i will tell you in detail next come in the uh, coming discussion then about pin code also yes you have to read about your pin code also what is pin code when did it originate why is it called as pin code what are the different types of codes uh, compare with different countries etc then mobile number so if it is a fancy number then something they may ask you then comes gender so yeah if it is a female then they may ask some kind of things like period leave menstruation leave that is uh, doing rounds in the current issues so otherwise also some gender specific issues like sexual harassment at workplace so they may ask some kind of that such type of questions like women in combat forces how they have asked for my friend so there are so many issues with respect to, to gender so they may also ask you about uh, section 370 transgenders etc then marital status yeah they may ask for example if you are married then how do you manage work life balance or double burden so all these things then mother tongue yes specifically telugu mine is telugu so i have prepared about telugu literature telugu important personalities yes so what i'm saying is personality test should be uh, uh, like it requires a dedicated preparation it will generally require 20 to 30 days to prepare in detail so do not waste your time because there is so much in the daf to prepare if they are asking some question from your daf and if you are not answering it then it would not be uh, reflecting good about you so that is what i told you depth of interest so in every word that you have mentioned in the daf that must be read in detail then subedari so i have prepared about subedari system mughals time then how it changed in britishers time what who is a subedar so everything so hanam kunda varangal again so community is obc then you have to uh, read about reservations in detail creamy layer non creamy layer then the recent ews reservation whether reservations is required or not all these things right then then uh, yes uh, optional subject geography minus geography so expect a few questions from optional so again i will discuss this in detail then name of the father so if the father name is unique then you have to so my father is ashok so i prepared about ashoka king ashoka then chandragupta maurya's dynasty mauryan dynasty then uh, then some basic things like how your father inspired you throughout your life or how your mother inspired you or what are the qualities that you learned from your parents so all these things then comes the government service and public sector so both my parents are in public sector and government service so they and also i am opting for government service so in most of the mock interviews my questions uh, were on this particular aspect why is that you got attracted to government service since your parents are there that is that the factor so all these things then professor so they have asked me about higher education system new education policy because professor is basically related to higher education and my mother is a secondary grade teacher so it is generally uh, related to the primary education so education was my main area of study because both my parents are in that particular sector and that is very very important you have to uh, cover that education is also important for a upsc aspirant that point of view also so i have brushed it in detail so it took me around 10 days to prepare on education only so very details because national education policy is there so so many things to study and uh, also i graduated from a university usmania university so again university comes into a picture there so so much to study about education 
then uh, again these things mother's place father's place then yeah these are the subjects so subjects why it is important is so i have a friend who was asked this question to list out all the subjects that have that they have learned during the engineering i mean graduation so they asked to list out the graduation subjects from first year to final year so what are the subjects you have studied so that was the question and uh, yes it would be very embarrassing if you do not recall even if you do not recall all the subject at least eight to 10 important subjects you must be able to so then my graduation was from civil engineering so civil engineering was another major important uh, part of my preparation so uh, i will share you uh, my notes also how i prepared for civil engineering how i prepared for university so all the issues with respect to university whether politics in universities so everything and then okay so that is the most important thing okay this is def 1 maybe so i will show you the def 2 also so this is the def 2 so this is the very important area very 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 important because this will be in front of the interviewers so prizes or the medals oh sorry this is my yeah yeah so this is as i told you this is a very very important part so prizes medals and scholarship so i have written that i awarded best internship project for conservation of lakes in hyderabad under mission kakatiya government of telangana so i was asked this question in the final interview they asked me about the conservation of lakes they asked me about mission kakatiya how mission kakatiya happened what is mission kakatiya what are the success and failure how we can replicate mission kakatiya on a Uh, national mode so they also asked me to compare with the uh, namami gange project so see the variety or the uh, logical questions that follow so i have written this particular thing so from mission kakatiya to it went to namami gange from namami gange it went to how to uh, like conserve environment then they went to um, this uh, particular uh, paris agreement so this is how the conversation goes so daf is very important and this particular daf is very important because it helps in building the conversation so you must be ready with such kind of things so you should anticipate like from this particular thing to how the next question comes so there might be some five to six things for example from mission kakatiya it may go to historical kakatiya and kingdom also so they may ask on historical aspects so it may go to environment it may go to geography also like how mission kakatiya in telangana was important because tank based irrigation versus canal based irrigation so it can go into geography also so you should be anticipating how these particular things go beforehand so that you will be ready right you will not be in a shock or in a surprise when spontaneous questions are asked then nss which uh, was not asked actually but if you check the previous year uh, interview transcripts then you might be seeing that many questions were asked on nss so when did it start what is the motto how do you uh, what did you learn from nss what are the values that you acquired so so many questions are there so prepare for all those questions so everything in your daf prepare at least some 25 to 30 questions what could be asked for nss for example what could be asked so 30 questions you prepare if you are not getting enough questions then you check the previous transcripts because this is a common thing nss is a common thing most of uh, uh, the aspirants could have already filled this so the questions are readily available then comes the chief organizer green ganesha then sustainable development so sustainable development in my see let me tell you in all my interviews i got a question on sustainable development all my interview all my final interview i'm not telling about my mock interview i'm talking about my final interview so in all the final interviews they have asked me the question about sustainable development and sustainable sustainability and they asked me to define what is sustainability sustainability according to me 
and asked how to be sustainable in everyday lifestyle so, so that is why the daf is important then Usmania University, alumni, yeah, I got a few questions on alumni. Then pre practicing sericulture, uh, this was my hobby area of interest that I mentioned. So as I told you, I mentioned that I practice sericulture in my tell me about yourself only. So they have asked that question in the beginning itself. And then nutritious cooking, yeah. Uh, so much of the questions were not on cooking, but uh, nutrition. So they have asked me in the final ask, interview, they have asked me about the portion abhyan. And they asked me to list out the details about Potion Abhyan. So this area, I was not very much prepared. So because I prepared about cooking more, like nutritious cooking, I thought they will ask me about recipes and all. But I didn't focus much on Potion Abhyan. I was expecting on Potion Abhyan also, but details of Potion Abhyan, I couldn't remember. And my first question was on that by the chairman itself. So, so that is why every word is very important. and anticipate so show your daft to as many people as possible so that they can interpret or they can anticipate various types of dimensions what could be asked because uh, as an individual we may miss on such particular aspects but some other people may highlight that so that is why attending mock interviews is very important even it is a one-on-one -on -one mock or a group mock or an interview panel kind of thing attend as many mocks as possible so that it would give you a good exposure and uh, so this is how and then coming to this also so order of preferences they might ask because some of my friends were asked on this why northeast is always neglected why do you keep northeast as the last option so for example sikkim i have placed it at uh, that position just to, to skip it but they might ask why did you uh, place sikkim in that position then just don't tell them that uh, that is a northeast area. I do not want to work or that is far away from my hometown. Do not give such kind of uh, answers. You can tell like uh, I have given Sikkim because uh, that is an organic state. So I want to work. Generally, what people do is they will give the Sikkim first priority because Sikkim is a very small state generally that gets skipped. So even the interviewer knows about it. But if they are asking you such type of questions, then uh give a good uh be ready that is what i'm saying be ready with an answer and the services also the order of preference also matters if there is some unique thing in the pattern for example if you are placing ifs or ips as your first preference then that might be asked uh, or else some of the people i have seen most of the people are opting irs customs uh, above irs it so that is a trend that we are witnessing now so they might ask and also Indian Railway Service, so IRMS, it has become IRMS now. So also placing that. So they may ask you, what is your uh, personal inclination? Like, why did you, what is the rational goal? Okay. So you should be prepared with the answers. Logical answers, rational answers. Uh, don't go by emotional answers. Right. Uh, so this is about DAF. So this is about detailed application form. Then, uh, so I told you, like, you will be getting a number of questions. So if we divide the questions into different uh, components, so there are basically five types of questions. So one is, tell me about yourself. Second is detailed application form. Third is on your uh, current affairs. For example, uh, in current affairs also. So again, current affairs is a very huge uh, component to prepare. So how do you prepare on current affairs? So current affairs also, you need to track, keep track of current uh, newspaper. So how, what to refer in current affairs? So I will tell you. So as I told you, there are uh, five types of questions that you may get. So so one is on, uh, tell me about yourself. So second thing is DAF based questions. So both are same actually. Uh, and uh, third thing is current affairs. So within current affairs also, I'll tell you, uh, if you see the transcripts of last year, so looking the transcripts, uh, there is a telegram channel where transcripts are being shared. This is very important platform. You have to check the transcripts so that you will understand the trend and you will also be understanding how the questions are being asked from 
DAF as well as current affairs. So within current affairs, it is very important to understand IR and geopolitical issues because initially only people from PSIR optional or history optional, they used to get the questions from IR. But from the last two years, at least from 2020 and 21, even 2022, so last three years, there was increasing focus on IR and geopolitical issues. Also, the issues are coming up like that. For example, Russia-Ukraine war was there since these two years. And now Israel-Palestine was there. And then Bangladesh war. Then we have the Pakistan economic crisis. So the China-India issue. So every time, some or the other issue is cropping up. So it is very important to understand the IR or geopolitical issues in detail and frame an opinion. So how do you form an opinion? So for this, please uh, read newspapers. Very important. Don't skip newspapers. At least if you are not uh, having a habit of going through the newspapers, read at least the editorials. I recommend going through uh, all the uh, I mean, pages of newspaper is important now, not only editorials, even your uh, region, for example, Telangana or Andhra or any other state particular thing or your district news also matters. So read newspapers in detail. So I used to dedicate around 1.5 to 2 hours for newspapers. Even that is not sufficient. Uh, but if some news is happening, then please uh, go in detail. So newspaper is very important in that. I think you know Hindu and Indian Express. Also, you try to cover editorials from uh, Hindustan Times, Live Mint. Okay, it will hardly take around 5 to 10 minutes to go through these things. Then other source is uh, Rajya Sabha TV. So it used to be big picture. Now it is called by other names, Sansad uh, something. So that one. And then I used to watch this uh, Shekhar Gupta's uh, uh, review. Then uh, also I used to watch this Gravitas. So the important things for uh, international things, BBC. So uh, try to listen or try to uh, go through different opinions. Because in IR or geopolitical, it is very important to form your own opinion. And opinions can't be formed by reading one newspaper or one article. Try to read as many articles, as many um, newspapers or opinions, articles, different things so that you will get multiple perspectives. Multiple perspectives is very important in IR or geopolitical issues because it is not that easy to form an opinion. It I'm saying it, I'm emphasizing on it because I got personally questions on IR and I was very weak in IR. So uh, I thought like I could have performed very better. For example, they have asked me about geological uh, sorry geographical aspects of they asked me to highlight the geographical aspects of russia ukraine war see again here your mental alertness becomes very important they are asking me to highlight only geographical aspects of it so it is very important like what happened uh, because of the trade routes have shifted so what are the areas that are uh, occupied by Russia because during that time and uh, they have also asked me about tactical nuclear weapons and strategical nuclear weapons. What is the difference? So they have asked about Belarus. Who, so all these geographical things they have asked and even technological things they have asked. So IR is very important. That is what I want to highlight. Second thing in the current affairs is about economy. So here in economy, the big picture matters. For example, India is going to be the third largest economy, second largest economy, fourth largest economy. So by what year? What is the plan? So that is the big picture of the economy. And how is Indian economy faring compared to other economies? So then RBI's interest rates. So any uh, new things that are happening that is important, more than that big picture is what is that matters in economy. And coming to science and technology, again, this is very, very important area. So because they can ask you on anything, for example, green hydrogen, they have asked me about green hydrogen. Uh, you can be asked about hydrogen fuel cell also. So science and technology, artificial intelligence, machine learning, so deep uh, fakes, 
so so many things are coming up in science and technology so now with covid again rising so covid vaccines omicron the details what is that variant called as uh, j1 variant na so that thing everything like how vaccines work so science and technology is again very important so this science and technology you will get it from the newspapers only that is why newspapers are very important i say uh, there are only two types of preparation in for personality test one is daf and one is current affairs so you give 50% attention to this and even 50 50% i am saying because the questions on current affairs are increasing there are few candidates whose interview went only on current affairs nothing from daf was asked there are few interview boards who focus on current affairs so that is important so current affairs is one so i told you about uh, uh, tell me about yourself daf current affairs and another type of question that you get is from your optional so optional my optional is geography so even i have a friend who attended interview with geography optional so on that day when he entered so it was raining in delhi so strangely in march was his interview so during march so it was raining in delhi so as soon as he went and sat so after greeting the interview panel so they have asked why it is raining in delhi in the month of march so they asked him the geographical reasons of it so they may so current so link your optional with current issues and also they may ask a few question basic questions so do not go into details because already your knowledge about your optional is already tested in mains so do not go in details but basic things or current issues happening in geography in your optional that is important along with that your area of graduation so mine was on civil engineering so they have asked a few basic questions on civil engineering so it again took me around 10 to 15 days to prepare on civil engineering also so that is why i am saying uh, so categorize your daf into static and current and in static you try to prepare all these things about your hometown about your uh, district etc and then your engineering thing etc and see most of the questions will be related to current issues only even mine was a civil engineering thing but they were asking the current issues what are the few civil engineering constructions which you think india has done in the recent past so they were asking me about chenab railway bridge that was recently inaugurated so i got a question from that so from there it will go to bridges from there it will go into the basic of types of bridges maybe cantilever bridge etc so even i will share my civil engineering notes with you whatever i have so so de in detail it is important to prepare so this is about optional and fifth point is uh, the questions that you get is situational type of questions so spontaneous situational types of questions so what are situational types of question i think you understand by the name itself so they may give you a situation and ask you to respond how do you react so uh, i have i did personally i didn't get any situational type of questions in my main interview but in my mock interview i did get some situational types of questions where they will narrate one situation and they will judge your decision making powers so it is similar to the ethics case study uh, but you need to be very fast here so these are also you can predict because there are there will be only five to six types of situational for example would be on gender issues like sexual harassment uh, at workplace so how do you react or some corruption which is happening so how do you react or some law and order problem that is happening and you are an ips so how do you react so for that you have to know the job profile so when you are given the situational based questions cleanly listen again your mental alertness is important so listen what you are whether you are an ias officer or an ips officer or you are a common citizen or for example you are some particular uh, technical uh, person so listen to your role understand the job profile so for that you have to understand what is ias what is the job profile what is ips their i um, mean their particular responsibilities etc so that you can answer the questions better so this is what is important so these are the five types of question that you get in a interview so uh, again let me revise in uh, quickly one is tell me about yourself so or daf based questions second thing is 
situational based questions third thing is current affairs based questions fourth thing is optional based questions and uh, fifth thing is your graduation questions so these are the uh, so whatever questions you get these would be falling under either of this so miscellaneous thing will be there that is about general knowledge generally they don't ask but if a candidate i have observed this in the transcripts so i have gone through so many transcripts so with that experience i can say uh, generally what happens is when a candidate is not performing well so generally this is not a rule as such but generally what happens is when a candidate is not performing because of fear or maybe the questions are out of the comfort zone they ask you simple questions simple general knowledge questions so for example uh, who is the chief minister of your state or uh, uh, they will ask you uh, like uh, where is sri harikota what it is known for or what is the full form of imd such type of basic general knowledge questions which everybody can answer but if you are in a panic state uh, if you are not in a peace and a comfort uh, frame of mind calm frame of mind then you might not answer the simple gk questions also so sometimes you will be at shock also see why are they asking about imd why are they asking about sri harikota so that is a very simple question and uh, if you get into panic mode why are they asking this simple question you might not remember them also it is fine uh, people can understand if you are in the stress also but also get prepared for such type of questions do not uh, go into a surprise or shock mode so just prepare uh, you are on these also like get prepared you can't prepare on what questions can come but prepare for that situation that simple questions can also be asked right so these these things are about the uh, verbal communication all right so these are the questions that will be asked Okay, then what are the other types of questions that can be asked other see oh, so, uh, sorry uh, other types of questions not so what are the different aspects of personality test so this is the general verbal communication so non verbal communication is also important what do you mean by non verbal communication that is how you react to the questions how you behave how you greet uh, how you dress so all these things non verbal communication also matters like paying close attention to what members of the interview board are saying and maintaining eye contact so if a member is asking the question then uh, maintain eye contact with the member and in between if you feel like others are also listening to you then also turn around and see them once in a while so that is a non verbal communication then maintaining a good amount of fluency so fluency in the sense it doesn't mean that uh, you have to speak good english it is not about that but clear articulation of your ideas so whatever you are thinking that should be communicated like articulation is very important so uh, it is most about articulation that's why keep practicing speaking uh, because in the personality test the main aspect is you have to speak so practice speaking on a daily basis uh, because in mains how you practice answer writing for a personality test uh, you have to practice speaking on a day to day basis speak to your friend or speak to your father mother whoever is there uh, near to you so speak to them in english so the mode of uh, interview speak to them in english and also try to maintain that kind of fluency i mean you have to clearly communicate whatever you are thinking right and when you are talking also you should modulate your tone for example if there is some stress on particular thing then increase your voice so that is called as intonations so that is also very important because that gives you a thing uh, of uh, good uh, uh, communication then uh, dressing so dress code i think that is a basic thing which i need not discuss so it's better to uh dress formally so for boys it is a coat uh, so t uh, sorry a formal shirt pant tie and formal shoes 
so for uh, female candidates i i uh, generally suggest to wear a sari uh, because you will look uh, officially uh, i mean it gives a kind of official look so i was uh, doing that mistake in my first interview so so my one of my friends suggested that uh, i was not looking like an officer so that officer feel should come like whenever you come into the uh, so that impression also matters so whenever you are coming and walking so if you are wearing a formal dress and you will have that confidence so that is also important to dressing professionally and see uh, see regarding the dress i will tell you so these things what happens is you will not give that much attention but those things matter so uh, do not keep it to the last moment about your dress finalize it just uh, some one month before your actual interview finalize what you are going to wear on your d day and second thing when you are attending the mock interviews also make sure that you attend in that dress only so that you can get acquainted or uh, customized with the dress so if you are feeling a little bit of discomfort on the final day and uh, you are practicing mocks with a different dress then that would create some kind of disturbance so avoid such kind of things so last moment things avoid that so and uh, next comes is uh, so notes so when you are preparing the notes for your personality test make sure that you also prefer uh, or refer to notes of the toppers so already so many toppers have given their notes so just uh look how they have made so that comes to handy and current affairs also just form a peer group uh, among yourself like four to five people who are preparing for interview from there you try to gather as many current affair topics as possible and try to discuss them like uh, if you have a peer group don't just go on making notes because interview is about articulation only speaking so try to speak try to form an opinion right so divide it into different aspects and prepare notes and uh, the most important thing in a personality test is how you handle a situation when you don't know an answer for example if you don't know the answer how do you handle if you know it uh, only some part of it then how do you handle so that is also very important so you also attend the mocks if you are not prepared also try attending the mocks because uh, you will be exposed to different questions and you will be uh, i mean generating that particular um, a feeling like how, how do you handle such kind of situations when you don't know the answer uh, so that is what and uh, coming to mock interviews also so i suggest giving as many mocks as possible but do not uh, take too personally if some particular mock is very bad you didn't perform very well but don't take it too personally try to learn from every mock interview so when you attend the mock interview if you find some interview board was useless or they are suggesting something which is not practical or which is, which is altering your personality then come to your judgment like uh, if if that particular board is not that good then you can ignore them but generally try to uh, i mean improve upon your uh, interviews try to learn from every mock interview and pre prepare a diary or a detailed notes what are the suggestions given by the mock interview board so that you can incorporate in your next interview in your next interview you should not repeat the same mistake so that is what is more important in uh, in uh, attending mock interviews and whenever you get some new questions in a mock interview add it to your notes so that you will get a uh, uh, all the dimensions of that particular topic right so what else so the final thing which i want to tell you is confidence is more important so even if you are not that prepared confidence is more important so at the last moment or before the day of interview don't panic too much just read the newspaper read the headings of the newspaper don't miss on the newspaper even on your interview day but uh, be very confident and as you know confidence comes with preparation and hard work so whatever hard work and the preparation that you have put in with that only you will get the confidence so that is intertwined entwined with the hard work and the effort you put in so make notes prepare uh, good notes uh, for all the daf and the current issues maintain discipline 
and with consistency i think you can get that confidence so that's all from my side about personality test hope i have addressed all aspects of the personality test so if you have any doubts you can ask me now